The meeting with Edison was a memorable event in my life. I was amazed at this wonderful man who, without early advantages in scientific training, had accomplished so much. I had studied a dozen languages, delved in literature and art, and had spent my best years in libraries reading all sorts of stuff that fell into my hands, from Newton's Principa to the novels of Paul de Kock, and felt that most of my life had been squandered. But it did not take long before I recognized that it was the best thing I could have done. Within a few weeks, I had won Edison's confidence, and it came about in this way. The SS Oregon, the fastest passenger steamer at the time, had both of its lightning machines disabled, and its sailing was delayed. As the superstructure had been built after their installation, it was impossible to remove them from the hold. The predicament was a serious one, and Edison was much annoyed. In the evening, I took the necessary instruments with me and went aboard the vessel where I stayed for the night. The dynamos were in bad condition, having several short circuits and breaks, but with the assistance of the crew, I succeeded in putting them in good shape. At five o'clock in the morning, when passing along Fifth Avenue on my way to the shop, I met Edison with Bachelor and a few others as they were returning home to retire. Here's our Parisian running around at night, he said. When I told him that I was coming home from the Oregon and had repaired both machines, he looked at me in silence and walked away without another word. But when he had gone some distance, I heard him remark, Bachelor, this is a darn good man. And from that time, I had full freedom in directing the work. For nearly a year, my regular hours were from 10.30 a.m. until 5 o'clock the next morning, without a day's exception. Edison said to me, I have had many hard-working assistants, but you take the cake. During this period, I designed 24 different types of standard machines with short cores and of uniform pattern which replaced the old ones. The manager had promised me $50,000 on the completion of this task, but it turned out to be a practical joke. This gave me a painful shock and I resigned my position.